So again, the high view from the cameras. Okay, so these are one of the things that you want to make sure that you see from these guys is pressure. When teams bring pressure, do you have an answer? Now, they end up getting this picked up over here by the back, but it looks as if Michael understands that that guy's really hot there. We don't know if we're going to get it picked up. I'd like to see him get back and get set sooner. Get set sooner. So he's looking at this quick out over here. Okay, I'm fine with that. Take it. Hit that back foot. Let it go. Let it go. You got one-on-one. -on -one. The other thing is you've got a quick out over here. If you feel like you've got pressure, fade away from this pressure and hit that back side. You see he's not really definitive right there and kind of gets caught. Oh, no. Now i got to try to make a play and can't complete that one. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Always have a pressure plan, right? I know they don't teach it as well in college. A lot of teams are just like, hey, just beat it with a throw. I get that. But I want these guys to understand that. And as they move to the next level, have an idea, have a plan, understand how to make the different throws against pressure. Ah, another missed throw right here. And again, these are tough to me because we've got kind of a, go route here and then this guy going here and you've got a corner that's sitting in between i'm not sure how you know that you're going to have the open guy to the outside because this corner could easily fall off of this right here and make a play now he gets enough inside that you have a shot at it but you see how he's starting to fall off that's just to me that's tough right on the other side we've got the go routes with the one step coming underneath could read it back to the other side. But as I said, with these double seams, a lot of times you're just reading the safety. Safety turns and holds that direction. We're going to come back to the seam on the other side. The seam gets jammed. Now you're stuck having to recover to something down the field. It's why I don't really like goes as much as I like stops out here. So you come back to this seam. You don't have it. Now you've got something to recover to instead of having to work out to a go route and be accurate on it. And even be able to feel. If I get that corner to fade inside, then that outside stop is a gimme every single time. So spacing, timing, read is a little bit tough. Okay? Okay, one of their plays that they love to run. Hitch, inside fade. Then they're going to bring the cross into it. So it's really a pure progression. You're reading over here to this side. Depending on the coverage, you're probably reading hitch to inside fade. Inside fade is really, again, only against a man-type concept. But you're going to keep your eyes that direction. Get this guy here to move. And then we're going to replace him right back behind. You're going to see good timing once again. Boom. Right behind that other linebacker in that hole. Good process. Another good throw. Okay. Here it is. Like we see with all these teams. Stick. Inside fade. Hitch, they're going to run the same concepts a lot over and over and over again. Not sure why his feet are inside. Again, I would like to read this one. Okay, so as we're reading this corner, this corner stays down. We got middle close. Maybe we got a shot at the inside fade and then come to the stick as opposed to reading inside first. But he may be holding the safety going, I'm going to try to get this inside fade because we throw it so much. Then comes back here, sees the corner fall off and recovers to the hitch. So a couple different ways to do it. Because they throw it a lot, I can live with that and does a nice job getting it out to the hitch. So another part of it, right, is I'm not in the meetings to know exactly how they're supposed to read it. So I know how I would read it. I know why I would read it that way. But some of these guys might be taught a little bit differently. So I can't kill them too often for some of those things. Another great go throw. Feels like he's got one-on-one. -on -one. They even miss the block right here, so he's got a guy in his face. But again, watch his feet here, right? His feet much more lined up to this side than we saw in the last tape. Sets, puts that ball out there. Boom, great ball again, up over the top, right on his guy. I know his guy's made a lot of 50-50 catches, but I tell you what, he's putting the ball in a position that's making those 50-50 catches even easier. Okay? So another pure progression type play here. Okay, so we're going to run a corner. We're going to have the flat. We're going to have another guy run a hook right here. 
then we've got kind of our mesh concept, okay? So it's kind of like a one, two, or a one, one there, and then you work to the next area. To me, you kind of go shallow here, three, and then you come back here to this hook, four, all right? So right here, I'd like to see him stay out the front side, okay? So he's got a high low here because he's got a too high safety. So he's going to have one of these two guys. Just stay there. This corner is already starting to go back. Just take your flat right here, okay? He passes that off or gets through it too quick. Now he tries to work back to the inside. This guy's covered. This guy's covered. This guy's covered. Doesn't really have anything outside of this one right here. Wish he would have stayed out there just understanding the structure. But on these pure progressions, what happens is, it's look at this guy first. Oh, is he open? Oh, I don't really like it because this guy's got leverage. Now you're off of that guy and you're to this guy. By the time you get to that guy, this guy's falling off. So instead of staying with your high low read over here, you're reading guys. One, two, three, four. So once I get off one, one's dead in my mind and I got to work back through it, even though the one is the one that comes open on this play. Now, we haven't seen him make a lot of bad decisions. Now this one, even this one puts it on his guy and hits him. Now, this is tough. You're throwing late, back across the middle, safety back there. You're not really sure what's going on. Boom. Doesn't get the completion, leads his guy into a big hit there because we're trying to just turn and throw without verifying. So he's been really, really good with his decisions. This is one that I would question a little bit, but you see it. It's what happens to a lot of quarterbacks. You take away their first, second, third read. Now we're trying to play ball. We're trying to make something happen and we lose sight of some of the things going on and it's oftentimes where bad decisions happen. Good thing there was he was still accurate with the throw, put it in a position for his guy. He took a big hit, but he didn't put the ball in harm's way and just throw it up. Ah, missed one right here. Okay, so this is the play that we just saw. Okay, so it's here. And here, okay, got a safety over the top, don't like it. Comes back to this side to read his two-on-one off of the safety. Good read right here. Just miss on the throw, right? Drive that throw, put it right there in the hole. I'm gonna take you to the back copy and see if we can see this. But you're gonna see him, watch him fade away, okay? He doesn't fully get through this throw and kind of keeps his weight on the back foot. It's always gonna leave the ball a little bit higher right there. almost as if he was caught a little bit off guard and then tried to rush it, was never able to get through to his throw. I like the read there, it was to the right side. Okay, so here's another one. I like the read, inside fade once again. Could have maybe worked to the inside with them having no safety back here, but hey, we get this corner to fall off. We've got the underneath throw over here, okay? Again, sometimes with that pressure, right? Misses the long throw out here, trying to get power on it. Not able to get it there. Like the decision in terms of who he was going to, just wasn't able to make the throw. Here we go with the deep throws again. So coming back to a similar type thing where it's two on one, he gets the safety to chase inside. Good decision. Get it out to your one on one on the outside. Another good deep ball, boom, right there for his guy. Miss the throw. Let's go again. Hard to tell ball placement from this far away, so I have to flip a couple of these. All right, little bit high on this one. Good decision, right? Ball's not way off, but when you throw a bunch of deep balls, you're going to miss some deep balls. Okay, so we've seen this play numerous times right? The seams, double seams. I don't know if these convert to goes or if they're running stops here. This one, you're coming back, working that free safety. You know, where's that free safety go? Shots are going to be right here if you like them, but everybody getting a lot of depth right here. Not mad at this one. Come back, feel like everybody's getting depth, making it tough. Just get it down to your check down. Nice little run after catch. You see all the space right there. Sometimes check downs are the best throw, right? Or you just don't feel comfortable, feel like they're getting depth. I like it, okay? So we're gonna come back here, one-on-one -on -one go there, guy down the middle, and then a shallow underneath it. So he's going to look at the one-on-one, -on -one, 
doesn't have it. Safety's there. Now come to your high low back to the inside. There it is, come back to your high low. Again, don't like the spacing of these two. Everybody's kind of on top of each other, but does a nice job of throwing this back shoulder away from that linebacker. Boom, gets the big throw down the field. I like it. Move the safety, get back to your read, and then good placement with the football. Another great go throw. Now again, don't necessarily encourage doing this because it looks like they're running the fake screen, trying to sneak these guys down the field. They don't have it. So he's going to come all the way back and throw a go route late off of this kind of pump fake front side. Right? You see him pump fake, hold to the front side. Oh, nothing's there. Comes back to the go and slides. Usually late to get there, but gets the ball out there. Another good ball, drops it on his guy for a touchdown. Really well done. I don't recommend pump faking, hitching to one side and turning around and going to throw, throwing a go to the other side. But in that particular case, if you're able to get it out there and get it to your guy, I can live with it. All right. So here's another quick throw. Again, see the feet. Feet are a little bit off. He's trying to make this quick throw. And he yanks the throw out of there and misses it. So something that we've noticed, right? Really, really good on the throws down the field. When he's got to quicken things up and speed things up, he's not nearly as accurate because his feet, talked about his feet being an issue at times, but when his feet have to speed up and then he's got to speed up with his arm, it's caused him some issues. Got to be able to tie those feet to the quick throws as well and not just try to make them with all arm. Okay. All right, so... We've seen this throw or play a million times already. Switch there, the goes, and then the one step. Okay, so you get your two on one back over here with the switch. Don't really like it. Okay, so we saw that earlier, and then he worked back to this front side and had the two on one. When he works back to the front side now, they've got more of a quarters coverage. So they got a guy inside and a guy outside. Okay, so with that being the case, come back, peek at it, don't really have it. Think underneath to your check down right here, right? So he comes back, doesn't have either one of these, right? Doesn't have either throw, depth, safety, corner, depth. There's the throw right back here to this side. Sometimes I feel like he gets so focused on throwing the ball down the field because they did it so often that it can get away from him when the read says, hey, come underneath, right? It's kind of like that same read he had before, the high-low, deep to underneath. This one should be the underneath throw, tries to fit in a whole shot, a stop to the outside, and they miss. Okay, tough coverage right here because they're running a corner and an out, and they've got leverage on both of these guys out there, but gets enough depth by the underneath defender to get back, take it, put it on his guy, get a completion. If it was me, I'm probably saying I don't like the leverage. They're gonna run double curl with the swing. I'm gonna go read my one, two, three against two underneath defenders right here. So instead of fighting the leverage, I'm gonna read this, probably gonna kick it to my swing here because this guy gets a bunch of depth but able to beat that leverage on the back side with the throw. All right, so again, I'm not sure this is a great route. Guy beats him at the line of scrimmage, and I think he's supposed to be running a corner route right here. Uh, we get the safety to move to the middle of the field. Like to see him kind of hold this off and then run a higher angle right here. He kind of flattens it. Penix throws it a little bit higher, and they, they miss right here on this row. Um, and I think it's more communication than anything. This guy's already going sideways, so he kind of messes the quarterback up. Easy to say, well, maybe he should have got back here to the pivot. Yep, maybe he should have, but I just feel like he got everything that he wanted. They win the, with the release. Safety's in the middle of the field. If this guy just pushes up and takes what we call a touchdown angle, if you beat the defender, 
Okay, so you're even or past the defender, we say you're even, you're leaving. That means instead of running the regular 45 degree angle or flattening underneath the DB, when you get even or over the top of him, you're taking a touchdown angle, a higher angle right here. And it looked like Penix wanted him to do that, throws it a little bit higher, and they end up missing. Okay, another good read. Okay, so we've got the shallow cross and the post. Okay, nobody back in the deep middle field. Okay, I love it, right? Nobody's back in the deep middle. We always say as quarterbacks, if you got something going to the middle, try to attack to the middle. So he does just that. Comes back, realizes there's no safety back there. Lay it out to your post. Okay, straightens him out a little bit. I'd love to see him use the field over here and let his guy run into it, you know, because you can run away from the DB. Throws it more at him. Still drops a dime right on top of him for a completion. Good catch there with contact. But like to see him just not straighten him out so much and kind of lead him over here, right? Throw the ball over here and let him turn and separate to find the football is what we like to do. But still, can't be perfect on these deep throws, but that's pretty darn good. All right, here we go again, right? Same play. Same play, same coverage. Two guys back here, okay? Hopefully we saw it before, okay? Don't have it back here. See this guy carry. There's your throw once again. Saw it the first time, there it is. You got the carry, don't try to force it down the field. He wants to force it, wants to force it. Nice job holding off, and he ends up finding his check down. Finds him late, not a great throw. Back to his back shoulder, should have been caught, but Again, we don't normally throw this all the way to the back side. I'd love to see him be able to see this. Know that he had it before. Hopefully they saw pictures. They talked about it. But understand what happened in the last one. Come back. You get the same thing. Drop it underneath. Another great deep throw right here. We're going to run a half roll. Half roll with the go route over here. Take that one-on-one. -on -one unless I get the safety screaming over here. If the safety screaming over here... I'm going to work to that backside post. Nice job working it. Boom. Good throw right on the money. Once again, good read off of that safety. Working with your shoulders. And get the big touchdown. Guess what? We're going to throw an inside fade. It's kind of what we do. Open to it, try to put it on the outside shoulder. Just missed again. So again, some of these things, hard concepts, because it's really not much reading going on. You get man-to-man -man coverage, you're picking a guy and you're throwing it to him and you're trying to connect over and over again. But when he's been forced to have to make reads, when they've got concepts that lead to reads, for the most part, done a nice job. Okay, so if you remember the first tape that we watched, okay, the very first play, they ran this bullet. So it's a hook here and a bullet's route there. Kind of jammed in the hook route in the first time, but I always like to look at the bullets first, especially if I've got a corner off. I'm coming out, if that's there, I'm gonna take it. So right here, it's exactly what he's got. Again, watch the feet. Feet are going this way, throws going this way. It's a little swing throw, right? And he misses it. He misses it. His feet, right, it's power, go in this direction, it's gonna take the ball somewhat that direction, okay? It's only a 10 yard throw, but we miss where our feet are going because we stay open. Now, I like the decision, like where he's going, he's got pressure, he's gotta get the ball out of his hands. But we gotta make that throw. You gotta make that throw against pressure, you gotta have that throw every time, it's just too easy. And the reason I'm pointing it out, it's not because we all don't miss easy throws, but it's the feet again. The feet will have a tendency to get away from him. And when they do, he can struggle with some of the throws. Okay, good decision. Comes back. He's got the one-on-one -on -one backside. Makes the throw backside. Okay, so this one, his feet are very similar. His feet are stepping now maybe a little bit, but they're more this direction. And he throws it out off of his left hand. Now, gets away from it but I don't like when that arm gets away from his body, stays connected to his feet, lead with your back foot, your front foot goes at the target, your left arm goes with it, 
you're always going to be a little more accurate. Okay, good decision right here. So these always kind of play into his favor because he likes to be open to the throw. So when he's throwing to the right side, body is open, easier to make these throws in this direction because your power is still going in this direction. But nice read here against man and a good throw. Ball out in front of his guy. Giving his guy a chance to do something with it afterwards. Okay, another good read right here, kind of bunched up, all kinds of stuff going, don't really know what they're doing here, but then it's just a quick out right here. Good decision to throw it to them, and again, just the feet, okay? Feet, feet are a little bit more closed off. Now he gets the completion, he gets the ball on him, but you get your feet lined up a little bit more outside, better chance for the ball to go out in front of him, because this ball is gonna end up a touch behind him right there, see how it turns him to the back, so, Ball, once again, going with the feet. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of guys that will open up too much and make throws. When we open up too much, we always say we got to take our feet out of the throw. What that means is now we got to lead with our core because if we lead through our feet, the power is going in a different direction than the football. But if we don't lead with our core, we don't lead, or we don't lead with our feet or our core and we try to make every throw with our arm, that's where we struggle as well. And that's why we want to get everything together, feet and and body aimed at the target so the arm goes with it. So now we got everything working in the same direction because even the best throwers in the world, when they're not going in the same direction, they've got to fight it. There's going to be some negative throws because of it. Okay, another nice job right here. They got pressure coming. Got press over here. You don't know if you're going to like the hitch over there, so he's got to come back to his pressure beater on the back side. Now, I would like to see him take this angle right here. It's the quicker throw. Just get the ball out on the back right there. But he buys time, recovers, and makes the throw to the out right here and beats the pressure with the throw. Would also like to see them pick this up, right? There's only five guys in the box right here. Love to see him pick up those five guys in the box and force somebody else to be the hot guy for him. But either way, looks like Michael understands he's got a hot... He's got pressure coming there. Just would like this one was going to be easier than the other one. But does a nice job of holding on to it, getting the ball out and getting the completion. 